Hello everyone, this is where we left off last time. We had looked at how to compute principal components using the vegan package, and today we will focus specifically on the PRCOM package. So if you recall, our original data frame includes the species as our variables and the samples as our rows. If this was not the case, then we would have to transpose our data using the T right here. Because this is not applicable today, as you see our variables are the species and our samples are the rows, then we can proceed to the next step. As you recall from the vegan package, it had applied the Hillinger method and this helps to account for any zeros within our data frame. Now to ensure that I am consistent in these analyses, I will similarly apply this method today and then proceed with computing our PCA, PCA.PR comp. We can look at the summary of these, and you'll see that same results as last time, our first principal component explains most of the variance at around 20%, followed by our second principal component around 12%. Now what you can do is you can extract your eigenvalues, and you can do so using this function right here, and this is important not only for visualization purposes, but also in the case you want to proceed with further analyses later and you can have the data frame already created for you right here. You can also look at your variables and this shows you you can look at multiple different results including coordinations, correlations, and contributions. And I have these functions for you right here. And this chunk. But I will skip ahead and I want to show you the structure of the PCA.PR comp. So you'll see that this includes our standard deviation, our rotation, center, scale, and then X. So X here is what represents your principal components. Let's say I wanted to look at this as $X. Then you'll see that I get all of the values for my principal components right here. And I want to bind these principal components to my original data frame, specifically the first two principal components. And I can do so by specifying that these values will be retrieved from our $x and these will be the first two columns. And when I run this and I look at our original data frame that I called verspec.pcas, you can see that these are now added at the end of our data frame. I can similarly look at the scree plot, and then I can also look at the percent of variation in the data. I can do this manually by creating standard deviations, converting to percentages, and then visualizing as a bar plot as such. Or to make our life easier, I can use a pre-existing function within a pre-existing package, and it does this for you. So similarly here, you can see that most variation is explained by the first principle and component followed by the second. Now, an important note here is that, yes, your axes are ranked in order of importance, but PC1 on the X axis is actually more important or more different than PC2 on your Y axis, even if your clusters occupy the same distance between each other. This is the same biplot that we had seen with vegan. And again, this other package right here allows you to modify this as such. So you see here we have our individuals and we have our variables across our two dimensions. So typically, yes, you want to look at your first two dimensions. Sometimes you may want to look at your second and third dimension. It all depends on the data that you have. Now, if I were to plot the first two dimensions, you'll see that this is a little bit underwhelming in R. And so I will skip over these and I will show you what else you can do to transform this plot. So PCA.PRComp$X 
As you recall, this is what contains our principal components. I want to input these values into a pca.prcomp.data data frame. And this is now added here. I want to also extract the first two principal components and call them plot X and plot Y. And by extracting these and moving them towards the end of the data frame, this is just a mnemonic to include it in my ggplot later. I also now want to use my categorical data frame that I called in earlier and I want to specifically include my BMI and my country variables into the pca.prcomp.data just so that I am working from the same data frame. And you'll see that now these are added here at the end. Okay, so if you copy this code, you'll see that we get a very nice representation of our principal components specifically across our first and second principal components as organized by BMI status. So these groups right here are overlaid onto our plot and I added an ellipse to further cluster the data visually. Now what can you do if you also want to add another layer to this graph, country specifically? Then you can specify that you will add country as your label. And I use here what's called the geom underscore text underscore repel to ensure that my country names do not overlay onto one another and we have sufficient space in between. All right, there you have it. So this is the plot enlarged and to go back to our code, you will see that our x-axis includes our PC1, as we called it, plot x. Our y-axis is indicative of our PC2 or our plot y. And then we have our plot grouped by BMI status that we called grouped and labeled by country. This is a point type of data represented by geom underscore points. And I've added a title, the X and Y axis titles as well. And again, our code for the ellipses over here. So as a recap, in this series, we went over two different methods to calculate PCAs. First, using the vegan package and then using the PR comp function. We also looked at multiple ways of extracting your data that may be then used in further analyses like regression analyses. And then we looked at several ways that you can use to prepare plots for publications, for example, and to help better visualize your data and your principal components overall across different groups and different layers. I hope this was helpful and stay tuned for the next videos on other distance-based ordination methods.